Hey guys, today we are finally checking out the NVIDIA GeForce GDX 480 and instead of thermal paste, I want to see if it works with a thermal pad. Initially I thought this would be a fairly straightforward project, but it turned out we ran into a few roadblocks, so let's start at the beginning. So here's the card in all its glory, it's from EVGA and when I looked at the uh, I.O. shield here I can see there are two screws missing so I believe someone was already in here. At this point I'm not sure if this card works, I don't remember testing it, so let's find out. We have a motherboard from MSI, the Z590A Pro. 16 gigabytes of RAM in dual channel configuration with 3200 MHz. A Kingston M.2 NVMe SSD. And the processor is an Intel i7-11700F and we have a cooler from Arctic. The power supply is an Asus Tough Gaming with 750 watts. The entire machine sitting idle on the desktop 77 watts and running benchmarks games I saw a power consumption of around 250 watts for the entire machine. I load the BIOS defaults, set the XMP profile and the BIOS makes some adjustments so you can boot from this old video card. Next I'm installing Windows 10 Pro, the Intel chipset drivers, the Intel network drivers, all the Windows updates and then we are installing the latest NVIDIA driver 381.35. And here are the results. We are running Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1080p with high details and after 10 minutes of running the game we're getting a GPU temperature between 90 and 91 degrees with the fan speed sitting between 3000 and 3030. I also ran the Unigine Heaven benchmark 1080p with ultra details also for 10 minutes. The temperature a little bit higher, 92 degrees. The fan speed also a little bit faster, 3180 degrees. I will take the card apart next, but let's talk about these pads for a short moment. We checked out the frost sheet in a previous video, testing it with a CPU, and we found the performance to be excellent, but the pricing was a little bit steep and the pads tended to stick to the CPU cooler. Now, if it sticks to the uh, GPU cooler, not a big deal. The idea is to uh, permanently replace the pad and then leave it installed. Um, they also have tweaked the pricing and I can't share too much, but my impression is that this company is actually listening to the community. They are already working on a larger pad, for example. Um, this one is 38 by 38 millimeter, which is a little bit too small to cover the entire uh, GPU heat spreading area. So a larger version will let you uh, cut it to fit perfectly so keep that in mind and they're also doing a few other things in the background so yeah it's a company that is listening to us which is awesome and i will definitely keep you updated when trying to take the card apart i ran into an issue this screw here the thread was totally worn out i couldn't unscrew it so i turned to twitter um, and asked hey any ideas and yeah with an ikea uh, electric screwdriver and a rubber band I was able to unscrew it um, so yeah that was awesome also by the way I'm yeah posting quite frequently on Twitter so if you're interested in behind the scenes stuff or uh, have questions yeah I put a link down below in the video description and then I saw that the thermal pads that cover the VRMs and the memory chips totally disintegrated I didn't have any replacements, so I quickly reached out to a few companies. And Thermal Grizzly, they helped us out. They sent us a few goodies, including the Minus Pad 8. Here we can see the Thermal Pad, and then I'm mounting the cooler, and I'm using a clamp to hold everything in place, turn the cut around, and then the four final screws putting everything together and then I just have to install the plastic frame and hopefully the card still works. So in Rise of the Tomb Raider the temperature went up a little bit, one degree and the fan very similar 3060 to 3090 RPM so a little bit a tiny bit faster. In Unigine Heaven we can see a larger difference. The temperature is still uh, similar, 91, actually a little bit lower 
but the fan speed is a little bit higher with 3450. I had a look at the launch reviews on both Anatech and Tom's hardware. They ran crisis and measured a temperature of around 94 degrees. So let's have a look with the thermal pad installed. Does it run crisis? So it handles crisis fine, but look at the RPM over 4000 and I recorded the noise of the fan. So yeah, it took off like a jet engine. And I'm really curious if you had a GDX 480, please share your experiences. Unfortunately, I only tested crisis after installing the thermal pad. So I don't have a comparison uh, how the card would have performed with the original paste in place. So guys, I think there's a lot to talk about here. I think overall, this is actually a pretty good outcome. So instead of thermal paste that might dry out in the future and these video cards, I think they're a little bit of a pain to restore. Cleaning the fans with some uh, compressed air is fairly straightforward, but taking it apart, reapplying, cleaning the paste, reapplying the paste and um, reapplying the soft thermal pads with the uh, memory and the VRMs. That's actually quite painful. You don't want to have to do this every few years. So these thermal pads, it's a, like a set and forget procedure. You install it once and then the temperatures should remain con uh, consistent for a long period of time, five years, 10 years, 15 years. Time will tell, but yeah, I'll, I, will, I will definitely plan on making a future video checking out if the temperatures still check out. In terms of performance, we found that the temperatures are still in check. The fan speed was a little bit higher, but it's not a massive difference. Definitely, it was able to handle crisis within the temperatures and Anatec and Tom's hardware, they measured 94 degrees. Unfortunately, in those reviews, I wasn't able to see how high the RPM of the fan was. That would have been some really good information. In terms of the pads, it's really good to see that Frost Sheet is listening to the community and making some improvements. So stay tuned. I will definitely keep you updated. And also big thank you to Thermal Grizzly for helping us out with the soft thermal pads. If you want to see more videos about NVIDIA video cards, I have two videos for you to choose from. The first one is about the NVIDIA GeForce 8800 GT and another famous one the TNT2. Thank you for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.